Ladies and gentlemen of the press and fellow citizens, thank you for gathering here today. I stand before you not only as a legislator, but as a committed advocate for the democratic values that underpin our great nation, Kenya. Today, I wish to address a matter of profound importance that affects the very fabric of our democracy. The proposed amendment of the Constitution of Kenya regarding term limits for elected officials. As you are aware, the current proposal that is before the Senate seeks to extend the presidential and parliamentary terms from five years to seven years. I firmly believe that this change poses significant risks to our democratic principles. I have formally submitted a memorandum to the Senate Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights, that is JLAC, articulating my strong opposition to this proposed amendment. And here are my reasons. One, threats to democratic accountability. Extending term limits undermines the very foundation of accountability in our governance. A seven-year term would diminish the frequency with which citizens can evaluate their leaders, making it harder to demand change when necessary. Risk of authoritarianism. Longer terms can lead to entrenched political power, creating an environment where leaders may resist change or fail to respond effectively to public needs. This could erode our hard-won democratic freedoms. Public distrust and discontent. There is widespread public opposition to this proposal. Many view it as a self-serving and potential threat to democratic governance, reflecting a, discontent, a disconnect between elected officials and the citizens they serve. Potential for increased political tension. The competitive nature of our politics often leads to heightened tensions during election periods. A longer term could exacerbate, exacerbate feelings of disenfranchisement among citizens if they cannot vote out unpopular leaders. And of course, the historical context. Our nation has fought hard for constitutional reforms that promote transparency and limit the entrenchment of political power. This proposal disregards those struggles and aspirations. Distraction from critical issues. This amendment may serve as a diversion from pressing national issues such as economic challenges and governance failures, detracting from meaningful discourse on solutions that truly benefit our citizens. Now, with that, I have also proposed, after opposing the seven-year term, I have now proposed a different amendment to that uh, issue. And what is my amendment? I'm proposing a four-year term limit. Four years, yes. Therefore, I'm moving an amendment that proposes a four-year term limit for the president, members of parliament, senators, governors, and members of county assemblies. Why four years? Because it enhances accountability, encourage political participation, it gives new leadership opportunities, it, gives it provides prevention of power consolidation, and of course adaptability in governance, it strengthens the democratic norms, and those are some of the reasons, but I can give you an elaborate in a, in a, in a minute what I mean by enhanced accountability. A four-year term empowers citizens to hold their leaders accountable more frequently. 
Voters deserve the right to evaluate their representatives and make necessary changes based on performance. Encouragement of political participation. Shorter terms can invigorate public interest in politics. When citizens know they can influence leadership decisions every four years, they are more likely to engage in the electoral process. But in seven years, they will give up and will give uh, uh, a chance to bad governance. New leadership opportunities. Our, democratic, our, our democracy drives on fresh ideas and perspectiveness or perspectives. A four-year term allows for new leaders to emerge, fostering innovation and responsiveness to the needs of our diverse population. Prevention of power consolidation. Longer terms can lead to entrenched power among political elites, which undermines democratic processes. A four-year term limit helps ensure that no single individual or party can dominate our political landscape indefinitely. Adaptability in governance. In a rapidly changing world, shorter terms enable governance to respond swiftly to emerging challenges and public needs, ensuring that we remain relevant and effective in our governance. Strengthening, strengthening democratic norms. By adopting a four-year term limit, Kenya would align itself with global democracies or global, global democratic practices that prioritize regular transition in leadership, reinforcing our commitment to democracy. And as you are aware, this is something that has been exercised in the democratic worlds like America, Ghana, and others. Conclusion. As we move forward with this amendment proposal, I urge my fellow legislators and all Kenyans to reflect on the values we hold dear. That is accountability, participation, and adaptability in governance. Let us not allow self-serving interests to dictate our democratic future. I invite all stakeholders, that is civil society organizations, political parties, and ordinary citizens to join this conversation as we work together to build a stronger democracy for all Kenyans. Thank you for your attention. I need to add a few lines and the reason why I came up with this proposal. It is a proposal that every Kenyan would want to align with, a four-year term proposal, because Kenyans are tired, they for sure would want to do away with the current situation. Now, members of the fourth state, looking at the person who proposed this amendment, the seven year term, looking at where he comes from, looking at how he voted in the impeachment of Rigadi Gashagwa, where he voted that Gashagwa should go home. This seven-year term proposal is a grand scheme for people to retain power. And it's not just the president. All those, and especially those who kicked out the deputy president. Because they knew, and they knew the people that they serve are against or were against such a move. So what they want it's because they understand they cannot be voted for in 2027. They want to take this opportunity and sneak another half term in their five-year term. They want to change the constitution so that they remain in power. From the president, from the members of parliament, and from the senate. I don't want to talk about the MCAs because they are good people. Actually, those ones should be given more time because they stay in the village. But whoever is bringing this proposal, they're sneaking themselves, or they want to extend their term, because they know they have gone against the people in terms of the finance bill, 
in terms of impeaching the deputy president. So that's why they want to do this. And finally, as I ask Kenyans, if you have ever told yourself that you are going to exercise Article 1 and Article 2 of the Constitution, that the sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya, if you have ever thought that you would want to invoke that article, the time is now. The time is now. You can imagine the leaders who are proposing a seven-year term. They could not tolerate one of their own for the next two years. That is the DP. They could not tolerate it. They kicked him out before he finishes his, his term. Why do they think that you should tolerate them for seven years? Can you imagine the discontent that is there in this country that people can go on with it for the next seven years? So this is a time for each and every person to rise up and say no to this seven-year term and support my motion. We actually reduce from five to four. I wish we can go three. But we go to four that is, has been exercised by other democracies. So uh, mine is to say that um, I'm going to oppose this. And there are several senators who are also so, uh, opposing this issue of seven-year term. But we need your inducement. We have realized they act on inducement from the public. So wake up and talk to the people of Kenya and talk to the leaders and especially senators because it's at the Senate. We are 67. So I mean we can talk to 67 people. And from what happened from the impeachment of the deputy president, uh, Kenyans had high hopes with the Senate but they no longer hold the same view. They no longer hold the same view of trusting the Senate. Because if the Senate, after listening to the accusation of the deputy president, voted the way they voted, that tells you they have premeditated kind of voting. And if we are quiet on the seven year term, the same premeditated, the same invested on or in a, a kind of voting will occur. The other day, I was on a TV interview with one of the senators, who is the deputy majority leader at the Senate, the deputy majority leader, leading us, the senator of Nakuru. And when we were asked why he voted the way he voted by impeaching the deputy president, the answer was, I was voting not because of the allegations, not because there was justice. I was voting for the sake of peace in Nakuru. I want you to reflect on that answer, for the sake of peace. So that means if she voted no, there will be no peace in Nakuru, if we were to go with the statement. So what does that mean? What does that mean? <music>